Today on Twitter, I saw an interesting post that made me recall a place where I'd worked when I was 20 and 21 years old. I've worked a lot of different jobs, many of them outside of the academy. And one of the places that I worked was Shakey's Pizza Restaurant in Waukesha, Wisconsin. It's no longer there. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if there are any Shakey's left at this point in time. But I thought that it would make for an interesting story. And it might spin off into a bunch of stories because, you know, frankly, I, I, I worked there for quite a while and there were a lot of things that went on that could be interesting to talk about. So here was the tweet. It was, what was the most coming of age indie movie job you ever had? And then the person talked about, you know, working in a, in a place in New Jersey and then I talked about, you know, working at Shakey's Pizza Restaurant. And the way that ended up happening is I got out of the Army in um, 1990 in the, the end of the winter. It was March. And I moved back in at my mom's place in Waukesha. And I needed to find a job because, you know, she was going to charge me rent and uh, you know, I was, I was happy to live at home and contribute. I was actually eating quite a lot at the time, as I usually did back then. I had a super high metabolism. And so what I did is I, I walked down Highway 18 and just kind of looked around and thought, you know, I'll go in and get applications at every place within more or less walking distance. And so that's what I did. And Shakey's Pizza Restaurant got back to me right away. And I, I suspect in part because I already had restaurant experience having worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken and having worked at Ponderosa Steakhouse, also walking distance from, from where I lived at the time in Waukesha. Although the, the Ponderosa was just a very short walk and the Kentucky Fried was about three miles down the road or so. And I, but I would walk it at night, you know, after I closed. <clears throat> so they got back to me and I remember getting called in and having an interview with the assistant manager. And I'm trying to recall his name. The other one's name was Jim. This guy, this guy was a former Coast Guard officer and he was a cool guy. He was the day manager. And then the other guy was the night manager. And then there was a, a manager and owner of the stores who was a real jerk. And I'll talk about him in a minute. So anyway, I sit down with this guy and, you know, he's like, oh, you got out of the army. And I was like, yeah, budget cuts. And, you know, there's a whole story to tell there. And we started talking a bit about like, you know, typical service stuff. I think you, no matter what branch of the service somebody's been in, there are some things that you can relate to, right? And so anyway, he and I, we hit it off pretty well. And he's like, hey, can you start? Uh, how about next week, uh, Monday? So I came in and the very first thing I learned to do was to prepare the buffet. Because back then, <clears throat> you know, it was the early 90s. And so pizza restaurants are no longer just doing pizza. They also had buffets of all sorts of stuff. They'd put out pizzas. They'd put out... Shakey's had these things called mojo potatoes. I'll tell you about them in a moment. And then there'd be other things that would be in there like onion rings. And I don't remember what other fried things we had. But then there'd be like a salad bar and puddings and all sorts of crazy stuff there. And so you could, you could come in and you could order a pizza... Or you could order the buffet and then you could get some pizza with the buffet and, and also get um, whatever else you wanted to eat, right? There was also like a soft serve ice cream thing in the corner. And then there was also a bar. And so that, you know, after I trained on like setting things up and, you know, I did some washing dishes because I already, you know, washed dishes in other places. And they were starting to show me about like, you know, how to make pizza, how it goes through the oven, how to make the mojo potatoes. Um, they were like, well, you know, you can tent bar, right? And, and I was like, yeah, I guess, why not? So they were like, okay. And, and then I actually trained with the manager's dad. And that was kind of a sad story, that guy. He, um, he'd been ac actually through World War II. He was that old. And he um, was a driver for, for an officer in the Army. And they drove all over Italy, and, and this officer was kind of a script, so he told all sorts of cool stories about the trouble that they got into and, you know, 
uh, the things that they avoided and the things that they did and the, the rare times that they actually saw at combat. And so this guy would, you know, he, he had a lot of great stories and he, you know, you could tell he'd been tending bar for quite a while. And like I said, he was the, the father of the, um, the manager and the owner. And, and that guy treated him like crap. You know, I don't know what sort of beef there was between him and his dad, but the guy who owned the place was, was a real piece of work and he treated his dad, you know, he made his dad his employee and so he could boss him around and, and tell him stuff and, you know, I, I I watched that and I was like, man, I I would never talk to my dad that way. But that was that. So he he's like, well, you know, there's the beer. You know, I'll teach you how to pour the beer properly. And then people would often get wine, and we had all these wine glasses hanging up there. Here's how you clean them up and polish them up. And we'd have these big jugs of Gallo wine. So people would come in at, at lunchtime, you know, business people, and they'd get sloshed. They'd get like a pitcher of beer and sit there and have their pizza and have a meeting. Uh, you know, you could actually hear them talking about business stuff. And then they'd go through a pitcher or two. Uh, while they were having their their meeting, and then at nighttime, same sort of deal. People would come through, and that was basically it. You know, there was soda, there was uh, beer, and there was wine. So you know, no hard liquor or anything. Um, and you know, as time went on, I got to know the different people there. You know, every every restaurant is kind of its own microcosm. There's personalities, and with them, personality conflicts. And, you know, some of the people were cool, some of them were complete jerks and everything in between. You had sort of your stereotypical kind of things, like the kid who is working, who's going to high school and definitely isn't going to college and is working his butt off to pay for his car and his insurance that he uses to get to his job and doesn't have much of a life because of that. You have your sort of like 20-something, mid-20-something professional cooks and and servers whose life is kind of going nowhere at that point in time. You know, because it's a shakies. It's not like they're working in a high-end restaurant or anything like that where you're going to learn some valuable skills. This is the kind of job that back then in the 90s you could take or leave. You could literally walk down the street or go through the want ads and just circle them and find job after job after job like this. There were a lot of jobs back in, in that time. They didn't pay well, but you know the benefits were you know you could you could cram food in your mouth and <laughs> and eat it up when the boss wasn't paying attention. And at night, you know, it's kind of funny. The night manager was kind of a screw up. He actually ended up getting in a lot of trouble um, because he embezzled. Things went off the deep end for him. He paid for his his uh, girlfriend's education at Carroll College, and you know she would come in, and we'd be like, "Man, she's way out of his league. Um, what is she doing with him?" And and we'd look at it, we'd be like, "Well, there's dollar signs clearly in somebody's eyes here. He was in love with her as soon, and she, he was paying for her entire education. As soon as um, she graduated, she broke up with him. He went off the deep end." started not caring about anything, which meant that if you closed at night, you could drink as much beer as you wanted to. And he was letting, you know, these 16-year-old kids drink beer as well. So that was kind of uh, kind of crazy. Um, but, you know, it was, it was kind of fun as well to, to get to close up and, and have some, you know, decent beer and sit around and shoot the breeze and then, then go home. And I did this job um, full-time for quite a while. So it would have been from March of uh, 1990 to when I went off to college in August of 1990, right? And so actually I would have been 19 at the time because I turned 20 in August. And then I went off to college and I came back. Uh, for the summer and stayed at my mom's place again in Waukesha. So that would have been the summer of uh, uh, 1991. And I worked that whole time as well. And there I had a really cush arrangement because I was sort of, you know, I was returning and I could do so many different things. I could like take the deliveries that came in and sort them out and put them in the cooler. I could cook, I could wash dishes, I could make the potatoes, uh, which again, I'll tell you about in a moment because they were pretty distinctive. I could get the line ready, I could clean, I could bartend, I could, you know, handle all sorts of cool stuff. And so um, that summer, 
I had this this really interesting set of shifts. I would begin uh, on, I think I was doing it closing either Sunday night or Monday night. I worked six days. And so I would close, then I would go home and sleep, then I would go back there and open up, right? And then I would have 24 hours before the next time that I would come in and close and then go to sleep, then open. And I would do that three times in a row. And then I would get weekends, essentially getting 48 hours free, and then we'd party, right? So, you know, I was, I was doing the sort of thing that we, we did back then. And it was like the perfect schedule for me. I was getting overtime. And, you know, you'd, like I said, you'd, you'd eat pizza and eat mojo potatoes and stuff like that while you're working there. Um, I think if I remember right, we'd get like one free meal a day. And so I would just like stuff myself. <laughs> you know, I could eat a lot of food back then. And so, I, okay, I'll tell you about the potatoes because you're probably curious. So Shakey's did this, this thing, and these were really distinctive for Shakey's, called mojo potatoes. You would have this slicer. And you'd have these giant garbage cans, obviously not filled with garbage, but they would get filled with potatoes and water. And these were like, you know, like 50 gallon oil drum size containers. So you'd pull that over to this, this slicer thing and you'd take the potatoes and you'd do like, you know, bags of a hundred pounds of potatoes at a time, put the potato in there, pull the slicer down. He would cut it into like four or five, you know, big wedges, um, you know, slices essentially. And then you'd throw it in the water. As a matter of fact, it went into the sink. Then you have to pull all these potatoes out and you put them in the water. And they'd soak in that water overnight. And then you'd take them out. And when you needed to make them, that's when the cooks would come and get them. And they'd pull them over by the fryer. And first they'd go into the chicken batter. And it was dry, right? So they'd be coated in like chicken stuff. That's right. We, we fried chicken a lot as well. And so the potatoes are now coated in this, this chicken thing. You throw them into the deep fryer and they would come out, you know, be like a big slice of potato, like this big and that thick. And it was really good. I mean, really, really good. Since they'd soaked up all that water, they were kind of, I won't say juicy as such, but they were, they were moist inside. The outside was hard and crisp and you'd put like ketchup on it or people put all sorts of different sauces on it. And that was one of the things Shakey's was, was known for. And so people would come from all over the place for these Mojo potatoes. When I worked at the Summerfest ground, we basically, as far as I remember, just made two kinds of things. Pizza, makes sense, Shakey's pizza, and Mojo's. And, and we were just like mobbed. You know, people were all over the place. I think if I remember right, I worked both summers at Summerfest because it was extra money and it was, you know, you'd be at the Summerfest grounds. And so I'd ride in with somebody and have a good time. And I remember another thing, too, it was hot as hell in there. Um, middle of summer, you got all these fryers going, ovens going. So, but it, it was it was a good time. And, you know, I'm, it, it's a sort of work that I think you do when you're a young person and, you know, you make some money, you get to meet some people, you learn about the world a bit, you learn about what to do, what not to do. You, you don't really learn much about the culinary industry as such at working in a place like that, but you learn something about it. And then, you know, another thing that was kind of cool with Shaky is that I'll, I'll mention, and then I'll, I think I'll reserve the rest of this for other stories, uh, the more that I remember about it. Um, the guy who owned this Shakey's, so Shakey's was a franchise. He had two. One was in Waukesha and the other one was somewhere in one of the suburbs of Milwaukee. I don't remember exactly where. Maybe Wauwatosa, maybe maybe one of the other places. And I only went there a couple times to, to that place. But um, we would get deliveries and he also owned the warehouse that the deliveries were coming from. So it was, you know, integration of these two shakies and then the deliveries that would go from the warehouse out to all the other shakies around the state. So one day, you know, I, I would always get the deliveries and I'd put them away and I got to know the delivery guys pretty well. One day um, in these deliveries, there'd usually be two guys with a truck if they're going around the state of Wisconsin and one guy was sick. And so the, the assistant manager was like, hey, how would you like to go on a delivery route and help out? And I was like, I mean, 
is, is it like just a normal day? And they're like, yeah, you'll be back here by the time that you punch out, you know, it'll be fine. If it takes longer, you know, we'll, we'll give you the extra time and we'll actually pay you at a higher rate. And, and as soon as I heard higher rate, I was like, sure, I'll do that. So I knew the delivery guy, hop into the truck with him and we go, we start driving and we went all literally all over the state, you know, of Wisconsin. You know, we stopped in Madison. We stopped in all these little towns where there was shakies. And the one thing that I really remember about it, because I don't remember too much about that trip, was when we were driving along and we went around a curve and something went wrong. The load shifted, as they say. And, you know, things weren't packed properly, I guess, or tied down. Uh, what would I know? You know, I'm just some kid riding along, right? And suddenly, like, the whole truck just lurched and we almost went off the road. And you know, we, we slowed down, we pulled off on the shoulder and we, we're like looking at each other, me and the driver. And I'm like, what the hell was that? You know, and he's like, the load shifted, man. We got to go back in and check it. And so we, we just got the truck stopped and we go inside and lift up the, you know, the door and stuff like that. And stuff starts falling out. <laughs> we, that's a bad sign right there right? when things are propped against the door. And so um, there was all sorts of stuff all over the place. It was a real mess. You know, and we're, I, I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow, you know, this is this is a real problem. Not really my problem as such, but this is a real problem. <laughs> and I'm looking at the driver, you know, and then I felt bad, of course, for the guy because now he he has to make everything fit and figure out what he's going to substitute for deliveries and then he's going to have the boss chewing his his butt out once he lets him know that there's been some damage and spillage and all that and and we start going in and looking around and actually it turns out it's not that bad but the load really did ha ha you know it it had moved around in the truck sufficiently to to like shift the truck as we were driving so we get everything tied down, we make the rest of our deliveries and we come back home. And I, I do remember he said like, I don't think you need to say anything about this when you get back to the store. And I was like, fine by me, man. You know, and I don't know whatever happened to that guy. He was, he was probably in his thirties or forties, you know, so he'd been doing that for a long time. He might've been a lifer. Um, so, you know, shaky's kind of an interesting period in my life. Um, happened both you know, after I got out of the army and before college where I was working full time there. And then, you know, it was a, it was a summer job while I was in college and, you know, it was cool because, uh, like I said, got to eat a lot of good food, not really good for your food, but, but tasty food. And it was, I was probably there when Shakey's was in, you know, if not its heyday, at least it, you know, sort of its, its glory days before things started to tank. I don't know if you can find any of these restaurants around anymore, but it was, uh, it was quite a place to work in. And I learned a lot while I was, while I was on the job there.